I was born with a, a problem with my aortic valve. I was always watched very closely. Without a doubt, Nancy's my most memorable patient. Emergency crisis mode went on in the hospital, and the decision was made to evacuate all the operating rooms, except for a very few heart surgery and neurosurgery rooms. And by the time we got up to the eighth floor, wherever she was, and we went to the family room where we had seen the World Trade Centers the day before, there was only one World Trade Center standing. And as we were watching, we watched the second World Trade Center fall down. And we were thinking, what's happening with our mom? The team focused in, uh, the operation turned out very well, but then she developed a new problem 15 years later, which was a, a mitral valve problem. My kids think I was nuts, but I was rowing in the morning and then going to CrossFit in the afternoon. And so, but I felt that I was at really at the peak of, of my fitness. I felt, I felt great. But then I didn't feel so great anymore. I saw my doctors at UCLA and they, you know, they had given me a couple of scenarios and then I, I spoke to Dr. Galloway. Certainly uh, a third time surgery was an option and it was an option that we can do, but there were these other new things that were very advanced. She was a candidate for a transcatheter valve, which was one of the first to be done uh, in humans. Transcatheter mitral valve replacement is the ability to actually replace the mitral valve using a catheter procedure. So instead of using open heart surgery, which is really the only way to actually replace the valve now, we've developed ways where we can replace it using less invasive techniques, going through the groin in the patients. This allows us to offer a therapy we never could before to a new group of patients. We are on that interface between the imaging and performance of the procedure, and we complement each other in performing these exciting procedures, some of them that are the, for the first time in the world. I didn't want to have to have another open heart surgery. And so I, in the back of my mind, I said, I think this will, you know, this might work. They discharged me on a Sunday and on Monday, I was on the treadmill in the hotel walking. Dr. Williams told me not to bench press anything more than 200 pounds. <laughs> she's a great example of someone here. We can offer this and she's able to resume her activities. I mean, she was rowing within two weeks of the procedure. It's remarkable that four days after heart surgery, you're on a treadmill. The people at NYU were amazing. I remember the nurses took such good care of her. And they were so nice to us as family members. Dr. Williams did an amazing job, and he's the nicest person. He answered all my questions. You know, I'm the annoying son who asks questions, right? And the doctors answered them all. It'll be six weeks tomorrow that I, you know, that I had this procedure. I'm back to my normal activities. Nothing compared to the open heart surgery. Sometimes I forget that I've had this done. So I have no, no, I have no regrets. I'm very happy.